Hey, Ringsiders, what is going on? This is your host, Boxing's Objective Observer, and welcome back to Ringside Stories. Or if you're new, we make content regarding boxing through mini documentaries, backstories, and much more. So if you enjoy content like that, feel free to subscribe, thumbs up, and hit that notification bell for the latest here on Ringside Stories. Thanks so much for your support in advance, and welcome to the channel. According to reports, Saul Canelo Alvarez is close to signing a two fight deal for reportedly 85 million US dollars. With recent news of WBC middleweight world champion Jamal Charlo arrested, thus potentially harming his chances to fight the undisputed super middleweight champion of the world, and with a three belt unification fight one weight class above between Artur Beter BF and Joe Smith Jr. with the Cinco de Mayo and Mexican Independence Day in September as the targeted fight dates Team Canelo has set for 2022. The question then becomes, what opponents will Saul Canelo Alvarez test himself against in 2022? But before we do that, I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Groove Funnels. What if you were able to earn an honest living from the comforts of your own home, selling your own products, or earning commissions selling an existing product, whilst learning from top-tier online marketeers with decades of experience? You can start the day absolutely free of charge, no credit card asked for. Only thing you need to do is click the link below in the description box, sign up absolutely for free. Now let's talk about three potential opponents for Saul Canelo Alvarez in 2022. Number one, Dimitri Bivol. Vastly experienced with over 300 amateur fights, undefeated as a pro so far, and the current WBA light heavyweight world champion, Dimitri Bivol was proposed as a potential opponent in 2022 when negotiations for Canelo versus Caleb Plant fell through on multiple occasions. Many people want to fight against Canelo uh, and me too uh, because if I fight Canelo many people will see my fight and many people will know who I am and uh, I will show them my skills. In my opinion, at least at the making of this video, Artur Beter Biev will be the most dangerous fight for Saul Canelo Alvarez. However, Dimitri Bivol represents the most difficult fight from a tactical point of view, at least in my opinion. Dimitri Bivol's experience, patience, his piston-like jab, accuracy, his ability to gauge distance, Bivol's more than diverse defense, his skillful use of manipulating rhythm, all speak of the Russian's ring IQ. Then there's the height and reach advantage Bivol would have over Saul Canelo Alvarez, on top of the obvious. Dimitri Bivol's style, which has troubled Saul Canelo Alvarez in the past, and I mean recent past. Canelo vs. Plant showed how Canelo still can be bothered by good movers with sound boxing fundamentals. And not to take credit away from Canelo, it's just that Caleb Plant lacked the experience and punching power to make it a competitive match. Bivo, on the other hand, does have power can't throw lightning fast combinations to go with his formidable footwork. So although Dimitri Bivol hasn't got the deepest resume in the current light heavyweight division, Bivol does hold wins over hard hitting Joe Smith Jr. who currently holds the WBO light heavyweight world title and former Lanil ring magazine and light heavyweight world champion Jean Pascal. A good question to ask is what would the weight be for the Canelo Bivol matchup? What about 168? Uh, it's not big problem for me and because I'm not a big guy for uh, light heavyweight. Regardless of the weight, I personally think Dimitri Bivol would be Canelo's toughest fight at this point in time, at least from a tactical point of view. And yes, Bivol might not be the biggest light heavyweight, and even though I think the fight would be worthwhile at 168, or since Canelo is already chasing his legacy, make Canelo versus Bivol a full-fledged 175 pound fight. Because should Canelo Alvarez beat Dimitri Bivo at light heavyweight, we're talking about a reigning undefeated light heavyweight world champion who is more formidable, closer to his prime, more skilled than Bivol's countryman, former Canelo opponent Sergei Kovalev, that Canelo would have taken his O from should he in fact get past Dimitri Bivol if that fight comes to pass. So how would Saul Canelo Alvarez fare against a taller guy with solid boxing fundamentals who has vast experience, great movement, great defense with respectable power? Because that in short is Dimitri Bivol. 
Number 2. Gennady Golovkin Whatever we may think of the outcomes of both Canelo Triple G fights, whatever opinions we have of the timing of those fights, with Team Canelo delaying the fight for two and a half years, Triple G versus Canelo and the Canelo Triple G rematch were fantastic displays of boxing prowess. I mean, Triple G versus Canelo too was 2018's fight of the year for a reason. The two Canelo Triple G fights showed new dimensions of Saul Canelo Alvarez's game, especially on the defensive end, which next to the loss to Floyd Mayweather Jr., the doubleheader with Gennady Golovkin forced Canelo to go back to the drawing board and become the top pound-for-pound -pound fighter he is today. However, as Canelo has clearly become a better fighter over the last few years, which saw him become a four-weight world champion and the first ever undisputed world champion at 168, Golovkin has definitely not become better. In fact, the fights after the Canelo rematch proved a certain decline. First, a competitive fight against Sergei Dervyanchenko, who won the fight according to some observers. And then a fight against Camille Zeremata, which definitely did not set the world on fire either. Most likely, next time Triple G steps to those ropes, he will be 40, having sat out all of 2021 with uncertainty regarding his middleweight world title unification bout against Japan's own Ryoto Murata. Plus, if the Canelo vs. Triple G trilogy happens this year, it will most likely be at super middleweight, meaning Golovkin, who is a small 160 pounder as is, will have to move up in weight class against the prime Saul Canelo Alvarez. But given the expectation of the zone and promoter Eddie Hearn, Canelo vs. Triple G, although maybe not as competitive as the previous two fights, will probably do good numbers. On the strength of both fighters' names, and also because of the controversy in both Canelo Triple G fights. Golovkin versus Canelo has proven to be a stylistic match made in heaven. With Golovkin's recent inactivity, given Golovkin's age, how good is Gennady Golovkin still? Will the Canelo versus Golovkin rubber match even be competitive? To be continued. Number three, Junior Makabu. He likes to challenge a cruiserweight television. Welcome, I'm a champion. I also like to fight the best. I accept the fight to fight Canelo and uh, say good luck to Canelo and you are welcome to challenge Junior Macabre. Y ahora estoy aquí para levantar la voz y pedirle aquí al Consejo Mundial de Boxeo la siguiente pelea para Canelo y buscar al campeón crucero Macabre. Now, after this somewhat surprising request by Canelo's trainer Eddie Reynoso, the momentum and intrigue for Canelo's debut at cruiserweight fighting WBC cruiserweight world champion Ilunga Makabu has seemed to have died out a bit. His latest fight proved Makabu is an aging fighter who struggled to find his rhythm throughout all of the fight, failing to impress, barely winning the fight. Even if Saul Canelo Alvarez would effectively move up two weight classes to challenge the physically biggest fighter he has ever fought in a professional boxing ring, Canelo is fresher, more skilled, and an overall better fighter than Makabu. And I don't mean no disrespect, but Junior Makabu is not the toughest opponent out of all of Canelo's options. Dangerous, yes, yet beatable, as his most recent outing proved. Given Canelo's progress as a fighter evolving into more of a pressure fighter at super middleweight, given Macabu's age, his lack of speed, and given Macabu's leaky defense, Saul Canelo Alvarez is definitely capable of redoing a Roy Jones Jr. when Jones Jr. beat John Ruiz for the heavyweight world championship in 2003. Sure, Ruiz was the weakest champion of the bunch, but that was about a legacy-defining moment for Roy Jones Jr. and writing boxing history in the process traveling from 160 to 200 pounds. Similarly, what Ruiz was to Jones Jr. could potentially be Makabu to Canelo. Junior Makabu is definitely one of the, if not the weakest of all current cruiserweight world champions. Yet given the fact Canelo, who started his career at 147, to travel up to just under 200 pounds is an anomaly for the boxing ages, a challenge nonetheless, an achievement should Canelo beat Makabu. A win over Makabu would mean a world title in five different weight classes for Saul Canelo Alvarez, adding to the Mexican's legacy who already is the first Mexican undisputed world champion in the four belt era, the most active champion in 2021, becoming undisputed world champion in just 11 months, on top of a resume loaded with then reigning world champions and even a few Hall of Famers. So although there are tougher challenges for Canelo than Junior Makabu 
at this point in time, winning a cruiserweight world title holds the most prestige. And since Canelo is the proverbial cash cow in the US and maybe in all of boxing right now, Canelo versus Makabu would most probably sell. Since Team Canelo has requested this fight and the WBC has agreed, since Junior Makabu has gotten past his mandatory challenger yet looked very beatable, since Jamal Charlo has dropped out of the carousel, since Artur Beterbiev and Joe Smith Jr. will unify three belts in the 175 pound division, all of which reduced Canelo's fighting option, I'm surprised Makabu versus Canelo hasn't been talked about as much as before. These are just my thoughts, what are yours? Let us know in the comments below. If you're new to the channel we cover boxing through mini documentaries backstories and much more so if you enjoy that type of content feel free to subscribe thumbs up and hit that notification bell as it helps out the channel a lot with regards to the youtube algorithm i.e inspiring us to make more quality content for y'all if you've done that already you're awesome you already know that you are the true undisputed world champion till next time ringsiders this is your host boxing's objective observer for the ringside stories Thanks for watching and have a legendary day.